Hey, I'm Chris, and this is Code Next Door. Today, we're going to talk about how to do asynchronous work in Live View. So, Phoenix Live View just came out with a new version, and they added this async ASYN. Uh, essentially, what the ASYN the sync solves for is doing asynchronous work. So, let's first start by reading out the documentation together. And if you haven't drank water today, this is a great time to do it. Performing async asynchronous work is common in live views and live components. It allows the user to get a working UI quickly with, while the system fetches some data in the background and talks to an external service without blocking the render or event handling. For async work, you also typically need to handle the different states of the async operation, such as loading, error, and the successful result. You also want to catch any errors or exits and translate it to a meaningful update in the UI rather than crash the user experience. So, what does that mean? Well, I have taken the time and I've created a new live view for us to play around with. And let's look at the code. So, on mount, when the live view starts, we are getting a number from this really complicated function. So let's look at that really complicated function. That really complicated function is essentially going to sleep for a second. And if this random number is greater than five, we're going to return an error. That's going to simulate errors. Otherwise, we'll return a random number between one and 100. Cool. So back to our amount. We do this really complicated function. And then we take the number that we get from that, and then we assign that into our socket to the number thing. So let's go down to our render. Let's see what it looks like. We got a lot of divs, h1 for a random number generator, then our display area. So essentially we have a number here, we're gonna display that number, and then we have a button for generating a number. So let's go look at it. So we're at localhost 4000 random number, if we click if we refresh, we'll see that took a time to load, almost a second or so. To confirm that, um, we'll see that we replied in a thousand milliseconds. So it took us a thousand seconds to respond. And if we click this button and we look back, it took us a thousand and one milliseconds to respond. So let's look at what happens when we're clicking that button. Uh, that button happens here from the Phoenix click generate number and we generate the number uh, event and then we have to handle that event. So the generate number uh, event is happening here and then we call in the really complicated function and remember that sleeps for a second and then pulls out an error if the thing is greater than five, otherwise it returns a random number. So that's the first iteration. We have a blocking uh, function here essentially that takes one second to run and it stops our render from happening on mount and from our, uh, it, it slows down the handling of this event here. And our user has no idea that the number is taking a really a long time to load. Now, you might not really be able to notice this as really annoying because it's only set to a thousand, but let's let's up this to 5,000. It's going to take five seconds. Everything's going to reload. And now look, wow, that took a really long time for that page to reload. And let's generate a random number here. Yeah, it's just taking a really long time. See, it's taking 5,000 uh, milliseconds. That's five seconds. So how do we fix this? Well, let's check out random number two. So we fix this by using an uh, asynchronous task. Uh, in, in Elixir, we're able to use the task module to spin up a process that doesn't block our current process and just handles really complicated tasks for us. So, what I've done here on line six is I have a really complicated function and I've wrapped that in a task. And I'm saying that the, I'm assigning the number to just be random right now. I'm saying that we are loading. I'm gonna to indicate to you like this, this loading screen and we don't have an error for right now. 
And when I use task.async, essentially what happens is the current process that we're in starts to supervise that task, that other process. And when that task is done, we'll get, we'll receive a message in our live view process. So the message that comes through with this handle info. So what happens is this task, it goes and does this task. And then when it finishes, we receive that message here. And depending on the result, we do some things. So if the result is an error, we're going to say we're done loading, set loading to false, and we're going to set error to true. If the result is a number, well, we're going to stop monitoring that task, and we're going to set the number to the number, set loading to false and error to false. And then finally, when a task finishes, when that when the task finishes, like the process has to uh, shut down. Uh, we're just not going to do anything. We're going to we're going to monitor when that happens. So let's check out uh, random gen random number two. So if we look at the response time, it replied in 115 um, microseconds. And let's do generate random number. And we'll see that it's loading. So we get an indicator of what's happening from the UI because we're setting loading states and our current process isn't being blocked. So that's why we use the task async. Now, let's go back to the documentation and read what this is saying further. So the assign async function takes a name, a list of keys, which will be assigned asynchronously in the function. This function will be wrapped in a task like we were just doing by assign async, making it easy for you to return the result. This function must return an okay assigns or an error reason tuple where assigns is a map of the keys passed to assign async. If the function returns anything else, an error is raised. The task is only started when the socket is connected. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's see an example of that. Let's look at, at random number three. So in our mount, instead of starting an asynchronous task, we're using assign async. So assign async takes a socket and, and then we, we give it the name of the key that we want to assign in our socket. Then we pass the function. That function returns okay. And then this, this map, which represents our assigns. And then in here, we're actually calling our really complicated function. So if I go to uh, random number live three, let's see how fast it responds. Just for the map. Well, that seemed really fast. That was 100 microseconds. So it's about the same as last time, but it's a lot less code. Let's actually uh, compare side by side. So if you look at the mount, we're doing the task async, and we're doing some stuff for loading and error, and we're assigning the number. But when we look over here, we're just doing assign async. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that we don't have a handle info on the left. Well, we have a handle async. Well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So when you want to uh, generate a number using the button, that's going to call this handle event. And what we're doing here is we're setting our number to the async result loading. So that's going to put our state in a loading state. And then we're starting the async operation, just like we kind of did before with the uh, task async. And we're telling it what function we want to call. And when that finishes, it wraps it in a task for us. And we get to handle what happens when that task is completes. So when that task is okay, we look in our assigns, we take out the number, and we use the async result okay to turn this number into an okay result, and we set it to the result. If it returns an exit, uh, that means the task failed for some reason, and we return uh, a failed with the new error here. And then let's look down at our render. So our render now 
just to compare the two, render right here. So our render, on the right, we had to do stuff to see if the number was there and to check if it was loading. And uh, we had like to do the loading stuff here and the error stuff there. But on the left, we're using the async result. So we're just assigning our async result, which is number, and then we're letting that be number. And then we have a loading slot, and then we have a failed slot. And then lastly, we have the slot that happens when you are just loaded. So we get the number and the button. And that's essentially what the async assign uh, does for us and the async result. It's a really neat abstraction over um, our task and it's really uh, far away from our original random number that blocked the process and took about a second. So that's it for today. If you like this video, uh, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you want to see next in a comment. All right, see you later.